Chicago Bulls pick Michael Jordan the University of North Carolina. On September 15th, Nike created a revolutionary new basketball shoe. On October 18th, the NBA threw them out of the game. Fortunately, the NBA can't stop you from wearing them. Anybody that has been on Instagram has been following me. You guys know that I am a big proponent for this sneaker. So finally released. I can't believe it. And of all places, Italy. But shout out to my guy Ivanga, also known as Marco Evangelisti, owner of Backdoor Bottega in Bologna, Italy. What up? Yo, so, uh, man, this is crazy. So I never thought that Jordan Brand would actually release this shoe prior to the new beginnings. The petition that I started several years ago was just something that was supposed to be a fun project. Maybe, maybe not Jordan Brand will listen. They ended up doing it. They gifted me a pair of the new beginnings in December of 2019. I didn't even think those were coming. The sad part about, about it all is that it was only reserved for Chicago. Now, with this being in Italy, you can understand. But then sometimes you can't because like you do all this work and you want to be able to share your work with the world. So with the New Beginnings pack only in Chicago and not on sneakers, this one being in Italy, but actually there was a silent drop for it on sneakers in Europe, I guess it gave a fair shot to those internationally. Now, for those of us here in the United States, hopefully when band day comes around, 1018, which falls on a Sunday, we'll get our shot. But in the meantime, shout out to Ivanga, shout out to Backdoor Bottega. Let me go ahead and open this up so you guys can see how this thing looks up close. All right, so here it is, the band airship. I'm very happy to be able to present this to you guys and to show you guys here on YouTube what this shoe is all about. This is what started sneaker culture, in my opinion. A lot of people gravitate towards the Air Jordan 1 with their whole band campaign and everything like that. This is the shoe that was actually banned by the NBA. The black and red silhouette, the airship. This is the first shoe that Michael Jordan wore when he entered the NBA. He played the first six preseason games in the black and red colorway of the airship. On the seventh game, that preseason, he was wearing the white and red airships. And that's what we got with the new beginnings. So right here, I'm introducing to you the Nike Airship Pro. So this is just like how Michael Jordan would have worn it back in the day with the double laces, with the pro circuit 
tooling. A lot of you guys have seen that picture that I posted on Instagram where Michael Jordan is just looking at the shoe and he signs it with a Sharpie. Now, to my knowledge, there are at least two of these pairs in existence, the original ones. Uh, Aaron Goodwin from Goodwin Sports has that particular pair that I believe is the same pair that shows him holding up the shoe with a Sharpie. The other pair is floating somewhere. It's either in Jordan's closet and we just never even seen it or some other collector has it and it's never seen the light of day since. So uh, that's, that's my knowledge about it. There is very rare photos of him or shoes of this airship colorway anywhere on the net. So very glad to have Jordan Brand be able to bring this back. This is history. This is for the collectors. This is for the people that truly care about sneaker history, really. Um, I know a lot of people out there are wondering like, well, why was it only released in Italy? Um, I don't know this. I don't, I don't know exactly. Um, we got something here from Backdoor Bottega. So included in the package was a poster of the airship. And then on the back has Backdoor Bottega's logo. And also, they can't stop you from wearing them now. I was extremely lucky getting this pair. Guys, let me tell you, um, I try to work my magic. Uh, it finally did. Um, I started seeing people getting gifted on Instagram and I was like, whoa, hello. <laughs> I'm kind of the one that like started this whole thing. Like I was the one that was telling you guys a story and you know, people didn't really care about the shoe. You know, a lot of people still don't care about the shoe, but you know, whatever it's here. And, uh, you know, it's whether Jordan brand told the bigger story or not, you know, I felt like backdoor Bottega told the bigger story of it and, you know, paired up with, uh, Marco and, uh, Gerard from the UK. I think they told a beautiful story when they, uh, shared it on Instagram. Uh, and I, I can I can try and share that in the description below, but um, I will link it actually, uh, so you guys can hear the whole conversation. But yeah, I I think it's an awesome story, and it was I'm glad that it was told by sneakerheads instead of by the brand because uh, you know the brand tells their version of the band with the Air Jordan One, while the collectors, you know, the people that actually know. It's the airship. So, yeah, shout out to all the collectors out there. Shout out to you guys that have, uh, you know, signed the petition to bring this back. I really do hope that you guys get a pair because it's it, it's a travesty that we didn't even have that release in the United States with the New Beginnings pack. Um, come 1018, I, I hope you guys get an opportunity to get this shoe because if you're a real sneakerhead, a real collector... I think this is one to have for the collection. Like the Air Jordan 1, the black and red, the bread, whatever, the band Jordan 1 is great and all, but this one is the storytelling piece. This is the one that you show to your friends, you show to people that don't know, know uh, the history of Michael Jordan and just be like, this is the shoe. This is the one that started sneaker culture pretty much. So anyways, looking at it all around i do see some craftsmanship issues uh the material choices though however are great like it feels great the leather genuine leather to me in my opinion thick cuts all the way around the swoosh is thick the way they la they laced it too like i'm trying to even figure it out where they double laced everything usually if another lace is included it's in a bag so the way that they lace this thing up is pretty crazy. So it almost reminds me of like, you know how Sakai does their double of everything? Like it was, it was even like this. It, it reminded me of them having that train of thought in it. So everything about this shoe is, I guess, pretty on point. I've never held the original, not, you know, even the retail version of the airship. Uh, I, I think they modeled this sneaker after his player exclusive, 
so that's why it's named the Pro. But if they had this in the archives, man, I think they did an exceptional job. I think even the little detail of the Air Jordan on the back is something to like really story tell about because at the time they didn't have a logo for Jordan they just had Air Jordan really so they stuck it on the back like that uh, as you guys know Peter Moore was the designer of the Air Jordan 1 he ended up designing the Wings logo so that was on the 1 and the 2 uh, the Jumpman didn't come until the 3 with Tinker Hatfield so just a little bit of history there for you guys that don't know uh, the original airship also had Nike on the tongue. This one has Nike Air, so that's different. And another difference is they updated the tech in the shoe with React cushioning. So React is going to be in this model, but it was not existent back in 1984. So Nike Air was something that they used. It comes with a booklet, so the original version of the airship came with a booklet and it just described you know the layout pretty much technology of the shoe and it tells you it has full length Nike react in its midsole and an air sole unit in the heel and on the exterior of the shoe which is a brand new tooling that they used which pretty much costs a lot of money to make they made it out of this shoe called the Nike Pro Circuit so it's a court shoe and it ended up being something that they transplanted onto this model called the airship so it's pretty wild that they're able to do this all these years i've always seen like pictures and photos of like why this area is all cut out so you know with nike being able to incorporate react cushioning in the shoe this thing's going to be comfortable i i can i can already sense it if you guys remember minute Maid poppy who actually was one of the first, if not the first person to showcase the airship in like his mind into a physical product. He had 3M like underneath the vamp of the toe box here. So, uh, and I think, I believe like behind the paneling here, but that was something that was different that he included in the shoe. You know, just to give it like a new flavor, a new mix of, uh, I guess something that you you know people would wear nowadays and um, I remember the tongue being like really high I think one of these they I'll, I'll do a comparison between the two versions just like I did with the white and red so as far as price and how I got this I definitely reached out to Venga and I was like you know look <laughs> anyways it ended up being 200 euro so converting that to US dollar uh, after fees and shipping and everything, it ended up being close to like 300 US. So is it worth it? Yes, to me, it is worth it because this is a sneaker that I've been wanting. This is a sneaker that definitely needed to be in this collection that I want. I wanted to have here and I'm glad it's here. Inside the box, like you guys remember the New Beginnings pack, it had the squarish looking tissue paper in there. It's pretty much like an inside out Nike box, like an inside out original Nike box. So sometimes you'll go to the outlet and they'll try to make a box for you if a shoe doesn't come with a box and it comes inside out like that. So again, you guys know the poster. And then on the box lid itself, like you can see it's an inside out look here with the Nike on the inside of the lid. Now on the outside of the lid, you guys can see there's some special messaging here, special attention for Mr. Jordan. And it just lays out the details there with the model, the code name. All right, and so Backdoor Bottega also included a sealed envelope, black sealed envelope. Gonna go ahead and open it. And I'm assuming this is the letter, the band letter, which is something that's funny because I had this idea to when you know at the beginning or towards the end of every year i'm always like what are the five things that jordan brand can improve upon you know coming into the next year and packaging stuff like this is definitely a nice touch so uh and there you go so this right here is just letterhead national basketball association 
that's the letter, a copy of the letter that was given to Nike, you know, indicating what's up with Jordan's Nike basketball shoes. And then on the back here is Bottega's, backdoor Bottega's version of the letter. So it's pretty neat. I'll let you guys, you know, if you guys want to read it, you can go ahead and pause the video. You guys can check it out. So got Marco's signature down there at the bottom. I think that's pretty rad. Thank you so much. So awesome here. When you pull out the insole, it says flagship on the bottom portion of the insole. This is more of like um, a thick foam, I want to say. It's not really like a polyurethane or anything like that. It's not really too soft. And then here are the details on the heel. So you get the same writing there from the top of the lid onto the heel of the insole. Red Nike Air, you guys can see it's covered up. And then on the inside, on the strobel board of the shoe, you have Jumpman logos and React. So I thought that was pretty interesting. On the inner lining of the shoes, you have my size 10 right there. And then something you'll see like in samples, it's got the MN JDLS right there. Uh, that sometimes is shown on sample tags. Inside tag from Backdoor Bottega reads CD4302 on the style code and the color code is 006. And the dates in there, February 5, 2020 to April 10, 2020. And you know, as normal, size 10, all that good stuff. All right guys, so that is my review of the band Airship. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys think overall. It's crazy. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and also subscribe to me right here on YouTube. Check out more videos and all the likes, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Hopefully we will get this release in the United States.